All right, YouTube. You're gonna have to forgive the noise. I have the truck idling as I do this S-bar repair because out here where I live, up in Northwest Colorado, it just warmed up to zero degrees. So, here we are into the bunk. Uh, you can see here's the S-bar vent where the heat comes out. This cover is covering it up. This is the first thing that's gonna have to come off. Well, actually this, this uh, exchange, air exchange pipe hooked to these two hoses has to come off first just to get out of the way. So I just lift it up, kinda, there's some wires over here for the electrical, so just be careful of these. Um, but yeah, this just pops straight up. It can get stuck. There we go. And now that it's popped up, just pull it out the back. And the first time I did this, I disconnected these hose clamps and, and did the, uh, just took it all the way out of the way, but I don't think it's gonna be necessary. So I'll just put it out of the way like that. Over here, I've got, like I say, I got the heat on and I got it on in the bunk. I may turn that off, but I got a bunch of heat pouring out of here from the truck heater. So the next thing I like to do Sorry for the noise, guys. Here, actually, I can turn that off. Let me turn that off. All right, that should quiet it down a little bit. So, first thing I want to do is disconnect this power assembly. And you do that. This is the, you know, what is running the heater. This just pops outward. There we go. And then it literally just unplugs real super easy. There we go. All right, so that's out of the way. You know, before you start this too, if you're like me and you've got a ton of stuff under your bunk, you wouldn't want to clean as much of that out as you can. Just gonna be in your way. I wish I had done a little bit more Okay, so holding this cover on here, which covers the S-bar, there's two bolts here on the right, and there's two in the back. Let me turn my light on. I like to have a headlamp for doing this kind of thing, so yeah, there's two back here too. We'll pop those, and this will lift right out. Okay, so I'm gonna get that done. Here, let's actually, it's a torque, it's a torque wrench, torques, wrench so I'll tell you what size it is actually I can't see I'm not gonna be able to read this thing anyway well whatever it's a Torx wrench because I'm not gonna be able to read the the size on it okay I'm gonna cut Get this cover off and I'll come back and show you the rest. All right, now that we got the cover off, the S bar is exposed. Um, to get it out, to get the top off, all this stuff is done in the truck. I'm gonna tuck these in this air exchange right here so they're kinda out of the way. Okay, you just unscrew this cap quarter turn or so it, it should pop right off of course it's not popping off I think it's key there we go it comes off and then the s-bar has tabs here and here and the lid lifts up and pulls forward there we go now we're exposed here so to get at the burner chamber we're gonna to need to take this, I don't know, some kind of computer assembly off. It just has a pin right here. You just squeeze these two tabs. But the first thing you gotta do is unscrew this torque screw nut. And then you, once you get that done, you pinch these two tabs and you lift it all up in one motion once this screw is out. So yeah, that's kind of tricky. And there's a bunch of connections underneath it. 
uh, but just because the angle sucks and working under the bunk sucks so I'm gonna pull this and I'm gonna lift this out and I'll come back once I've got that done just remember when you're pinching this and you're lifting out there's a bunch of connections under there um, so you wanna you wanna not you know jerk it out okay okay I got the screw off and I pinched it out and uh, so it's clear now so I'll just show you once you lift it out what's it hung up on it's hung oh, oh okay so in the back there's this rubber grommet that slides into the keyway so you're gonna want to slide that out and then you get some play okay so with this out you can see the blower fan the motor this control module and it runs down to the glow pin right here so I'm gonna just unplug the glow pin and this is a keyed plug so you don't have to worry too much about it uh, which way it went in because it's keyed so the next thing I'm gonna do and I I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you this is I'm gonna remove this rubber seal from the glow pin right here and these are really fragile the glow pin connections are real fragile so when you do this you really want to hold these wires so that you're not pulling on the connection because the glow pin is reusable I got a new one because I just figure if I'm gonna go in here I'm gonna replace it it was about a hundred bucks on Amazon but yeah so I'm gonna pull this rubber grommet I'm gonna slide it down the way a little bit and that'll expose the glow pin all right well as you can see I got the glow pin exposed and like I said it's fragile right I broke one of the contacts off there's a contact that goes on the top which I'm guessing is the positive because it's white and there's a brown it goes down to the base I'm guessing that's a ground because it's brown and it goes down to the base so you can see hopefully you can see I broke the contact off now I'll probably just solder that back on and have this glow pin as a spare but like I'm saying fragile so I'm gonna slide this grommet down a little bit farther bear with me all right so to get this off you're gonna need a slotted 12 millimeter socket now with the glow pin that I bought on eBay it came with this one but I had made one already I mean this is a one-time use tool I just cut that out with a Dremel I bought a socket at a at a pawn shop for 50 cents I gave him a dollar because I'm not, that's how generous I am and I just cut it out I'm probably going to use the socket um, just because I don't want to deal with this keyed way I'm not sure but whatever I'm gonna pull the glow pin and we'll take it from there all right so here's the glow pin you can see the positive connection off the top I busted off this thing has got ceramic on the inside as an insulator super fragile man when you're when you're going to pull this make sure you got your socket on there good wires are out of the way you're doing a square turn you want it all lined up so that it comes you know so that you break it clean and uh, and not do what I did I think I did this slide in the grommet off I know I did but nonetheless you could easily break the ceramic on the inside trying to take it off you want to make sure everything's going in real square these are not in super tight so should be relatively easy and then as you're twisting it out the, the wire leads are, are going to want to get caught up on everything entangled so just take your time and free those up every half turn or so yeah depending on how long you wait to do this these can be a, a bear to get out and I'm going to show you what to do in that case so if you're not trying to recycle this screen the next trick that you can do to get it out is get a straight pick get in there and bury it in there and pull it off the sidewall kind of bend it off the sidewall you can see that 
I, be I bent it off the sidewall. And then with a side set of narrow needle nose, which hopefully I have, you know, hope I have a set of narrower ones, but I might be able to get it with this. It's a real tight chamber. Anyway, if you can just get a hold of it and twist and lift it out, there she is. That's all it is. Okay? So, next thing is going to be to clean out the ventilation hole. And there's a ventilation hole. It's only about a quarter inch down. Points toward the fan motor. You want to get in there. This is where all your combustion air comes through. Oops. Okay, I was wrong. It's pointing toward... I don't know if you can see that. Can you see my pick sticking through there? Let me see if I can get in there for you. It's pointing toward me. Can you see it sticking through there? So anyway, you just get in there, wiggle that thing around, make sure there's no carbon in there. <clears throat> if there is, clean it out. Yeah, so it's pointing it's pointing this way, okay? And I guess I can see it kinda. It's And it's just deep enough, it's not past the threads. It's in the threads, okay? Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get a wire brush. I'm hoping this isn't too big. I bought this on Amazon, it's looking like it's gonna be way too big. But I'm gonna get in there. I'm gonna try and get it way down in there and clean out some of the carbon buildup in the, uh, oh wow, yeah, that is way too big. All right, next step, because that's about as far as I'm going to get with the tools I got, so I'm not digging out my rifle brushes. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the atomizer screen. I'm going to, there it is, it comes in a kit with the setting tool, so I'll show you how we do that. Okay, so this tool it just sets the depth. So you can see here where the, it's beveled. It won't allow you to push it in there any deeper. And if you can look close, you see these welds where it's crimped and welded. That side needs to go, it's gonna have a little less airflow. So you wanna put that away from your, your intake, your air intake that we cleaned out with the pick. So point that away from it. It'll stick it all. Yeah, I got, if I've, I've pushed it on there a little bit, I got it to stick. So there's my, welds I've got those pointed away or toward the center of the unit I'm just gonna push this in there it won't let me go any deeper than it's allowed to and out it comes next is gonna be to really carefully put the glow pin in okay guys I got it in there and I gotta tell you it was about five seven turns to get it all the way in there full rotations um, then I set it and you know you really got to get your socket down in there deep make sure it's square two-handed job you know you make it snug and uh, you know the next thing for me to do is is going to be to uh, plug plug it back into the keyed port there anyway so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna plug it in I'm gonna put that back on I'm gonna set my grommet and again I'm gonna set my grommet super careful all right, so she's back in there. Make sure you set your screw here. That's super important. You're gonna wanna put the cover back on. Oh look, that grommet is not quite seated. See that? The whole time when I was putting this glow pin in and trying to set that grommet, it was, I could just hear it, it was talking to me. It was like, please break me, please. Okay, got the cover back on, screwed the cap on, plugged it back up, I will do the moment of truth. All right, hey, are you proud of me for getting that done? Yeah? Well, thanks. So yeah, we're gonna go out, let it run for a bit, make sure there's no error messages, and then, uh, oh, I got my headlamp on, look. All right, you ready to go check it out? See if it's still working? All right, so we had a 
check blower motor error is what it said. So I'm going to show you how to reset these codes and we'll try it again. Come on. Let's go check that pipe. See if there's any heat coming out of it. So we had a check blower motor error, which is not good. But we're going to reset the codes and try it again. And the way you do that is you get a tiny little pin. And right in here somewhere is a hole. There it is. Push it in once. And then you push the cold button, I think, twice. Goes into maintenance mode. It says memory test, please wait. So you wait. It says memory test, okay. You want to check the diagnostics. So diagnose, yes. Reading codes. See what it's got for codes. No actual faults, but it does give a 31, 33, and a 20. Okay. You want to erase the codes, yes. I continued to get the blower motor error. I was getting erratic speed and check blower motor. So I pulled the unit, I pulled the S bar. And that wasn't an effort to get the blower motor out. So to get it out of the truck, wasn't that bad. You gotta get underneath the rig and under the rig, there is a, a, a 90 degree tube that comes off of the intake and then the exhaust. Um, all I had to do for the, for the intake was to unscrew the two nuts that were on over the top and it slid off the, the fuel line, which is a small little knob right here. Uh, it had a clamp on it and it, uh, it was kind of in the way of the intake plastic shield from coming off. So that was a little bit of a finesse, but we got her off. And then I undid the clamp, slid the fuel line off. And then on the exhaust, there was one clamp which squeezed the exhaust onto the pipe, undid the clamp, and then took these two bolts off. And she lifted right out from underneath the bunk. So once you get it out of your truck, um, undo this gasket here, you just take this off, mine was a little bit stuck, particularly here where that heat is, it had melted on a little bit, but just be careful, and then this back piece pops off, at least it did really easy last time, there we go, pops right off. And then this just comes out like that. So there's the S bar. In order to do the blower motor, you have to take these four bolts out, which are torque screws. Seems like this whole thing is built with torque screws. Um, oh, and then obviously all of these plugs which go into the ECU, the electronic control unit. I, I took a picture of them so I knew which ones were going to go where when I when I go to put them in because it does look like a lot of these are keyed the same way or they have the same size input. So I took a picture so I know which way to put it back together. Okay, so I got the screws out. Just four screws. They're not in there tight at all. Uh, there's a little keyway right here, but anyway, it just lifts straight out. And there it is. So we're going to try and replace this. It's got the, the fan up here, the blower, and I don't know what this does back here, but it's got this. The thing's spinning really nice. I'm hoping it's not my electronic control unit. That's bad. Inside here is the combustion chamber. 
And I really think that that is the only other part that's there. Um, there's these lines which go to here. I'm guessing that's a thermostat. I'm not sure. Uh, it looks like I was able to salvage my gasket. So I ordered a blower motor on Amazon. It was like 220 bucks. And I also ordered a whole new unit refurbed because if I put it back together with the blower motor and that does not work, then I'm going to drop the refurb unit in there, which will come with an ECM. So that's where we're at, guys. I'll make a video on Monday or Tuesday when the parts come in and I get her back together. The wife will be home by then, so... Hopefully I'll be able to do it. I'm sure there's going to be lots on the honeydew list when she gets home. Thanks for watching.